let's get something straight. There is no magic trick to being a better dungeon master for tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons. There is no Mercer machine or Perkins potion you can take. There is no blog article, RPG, PDF, or even YouTube video that can make you a better DM or GM overnight. But, but, there are some basic things that you can do to improve your ability to run role-playing games, make them more fun for your players, and increase your ability to create and tell amazing stories. Everything I'm about to tell you is pretty basic stuff. You're probably gonna know some of it already, but it's genuinely and sincerely the best advice I can give you for improving as a dungeon master. Run games. Run all the games. First and foremost, you've got to just start running games. No amount of reading blogs, watching YouTube videos, or Twitch streams is going to make you a better GM on their own. You can spend hours, days, weeks, months writing a campaign or designing a world, but if you don't have the experience of actually running tabletop role-playing games, you're still going to be a beginner. What you need to do is just get some friends, get behind the screen, and do the work. Every writer and artist I know has the same advice when asked, how do I improve? Their answer, write, draw, paint more. Whenever you can, practice, practice, practice. It's hardly groundbreaking advice, and it's not what folks want to hear. People want an easy fix. But being a DM or a GM is no different to being a writer, an artist, or an actor. It's a skill, and like any skill, you need to practice to improve. And for us, that means running games, because being a DM isn't just about doing funny voices or how detailed your world building is. It's how you interact with the players, how you engage with them, how you improvise and react to the players' choices. So the only way we can practice is by doing it for real, whether that's running a pre-written module, making your own worlds, one-off adventures, or long-running campaigns. Run games. This is hurdle number one to being a DM. A lot of folks are afraid that they'll be bad or give it one go, decide they suck and give up. They don't want to take the leap or keep going. Nobody is born a good DM. It takes years of practice. Stream DMs like myself, Mercer, Bronzegar have been doing this for years. Comparing yourself to any DM who's been doing it for a long time isn't fair to you. Likewise, putting any other DM on a pedestal isn't going to help you either. Nobody is perfect. Even well-practiced and experienced GMs get things wrong, make bad calls, or just do things in a way that your own group wouldn't enjoy. So just remember that being a good DM takes time and practice. And the only way to get that practice is to run games. Don't put it off. Don't spend forever working on the campaign. Get some friends over and roll some dice together. Play RPGs that aren't just D&D. Controversial advice. Ho <laughs> ho, spicy. Look, I love Dungeons and Dragons. And chances are you're watching this video because you want to DM Dungeons and Dragons. So this might seem odd advice. But one of the best things I ever did was to start playing, running, and reading the rules for other tabletop role-playing games. D&D is far, far from perfect in terms of design and structure and mechanics. It's quite limited in some areas and vastly overcomplicated in others. Often, when all you play is D&D, you just sort of accept some of those problems and find ways to work around them that aren't always very fun. If you only ever play D&D, you'll find you'll get stuck in a certain way of thinking. Skill checks can only be resolved like this. This is how you handle experience. Combat works like this. If all you've got is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. Playing other RPGs can introduce you to new ways of thinking. They can help you think more narratively or give you options for how to handle things differently. They give you ideas on how to build your worlds, structure your adventures, handle player motivations, or just introduce fun mechanics to spice your games up. Honestly, you might even find a system that just works better for you overall. D&D isn't the only option out there. 
Part of being a good dungeon master is having an open mind to change the rules and make the game more fun for your players. If your players want a more hardcore, gritty fantasy story, then playing something like Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game will give you some great ideas for critical injuries, healing, diseases, and more. If your players want a more narrative, involved experience where they have more control over things, then trying out the various Powered by the Apocalypse games or Fantasy Flight's Genesis or Star Wars role-playing games will guide you in that style of gameplay. Think of it like this. D&D is the Phillips screwdriver of RPGs, a basic tool, but with it you can assemble some solid IKEA furniture. You don't need anything else, well, maybe an Allen key, but that's irrelevant to this metaphor. Other RPGs are like different kinds of tools. A heavy hammer like Zweihandler, a delicate carving knife like Quest, a rusty but trusty power drill of Warhammer Fantasy role-playing, or a sleek obsidian eldritch chisel for Blades in the Dark. With more tools in your toolbox, you can craft more unique, beautiful things. They'll help you improve when something needs fixing, or when if one of your players wants something custom, or you want to build something different. Get so many tools that you end up like this guy. Hi, Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> Read, watch, listen to all types of media and genres. This one is pretty easy to do, but it's actually really useful. Just like playing RPGs other than D&D helps you build up a toolbox to use in building adventures and campaigns, consuming different types of media, whether it's TV shows, movies, video games, books, anime, podcasts, whatever, it gives you a wider pool of inspiration to draw from. If you only watch anime and then you try and run a hyper-realistic medieval fantasy RPG, well, what do you use as a reference? Where do you get your ideas from? Even subconsciously, you're going to use ideas and themes and narrative hooks from what you know. You might not be as extreme as having your paladins go Super Saiyan or your monks gaining the power of the nine-tailed fox, but you might find that there is a disconnect between the game you're running and the game you envisioned. The larger our pool of inspiration and the more wider variety of the media we consume, the more ideas we have to pull from when creating adventures, NPCs, locations, magic items, etc. This is such a crucial thing for a GM. Even genres you might not think of can be a huge benefit. Crime and mystery can show us how to foreshadow and plant information. Comedy show us how to make things more lighthearted and silly. Slice of life reality can give us really genuine character traits and personalities for NPCs. A lot of people think using media tropes or taking inspiration from existing things is bad. There's nothing wrong with being inspired by other media or using archetypes and tropes as long as you understand why you're using them and making changes, twists where necessary. I want to specifically call out books and movies, TV shows for improving your ability to describe and set scenes. A lot of folks ask me how they can get better at describing things to their players, how to really immerse them within the scene. This is something I know people really admire Matt Mercer for, and it's something I personally really enjoy doing myself as well. The best answer for this is twofold, books and TV movies. When reading books, especially genre fiction like fantasy or sci-fi, pay attention to the prose when the author is describing a scene or introducing a character. You'll see how the author doesn't need to describe every minute detail. They focus on key elements, things that will spark the reader's imagination, details that tell us things about the location or the character that aren't outright stated. They'll often use multiple senses to enhance this as well. Sight, sound, smell, sometimes taste or feel. These are just as powerful for a DM to set the scene to their players. Grab your favourite book, find a describing scene, and try to see how the author uses words and feelings to put you into that setting. TV shows and movies are also good for this if you study them and look at them critically. Watch a scene in a movie, and rather than processing it as a whole, break it down scene by scene. Look at what elements the director has chosen to show in that scene. What's in the background? What are the characters wearing? How does it make you feel about them? How does this scene flow into the next one? As an example, if we look at the Council of Elrond in Lord of the Rings, 
Most of the scene is focused on the characters, close-ups of faces and expressions, but the environment and the setting does a lot of work too. We see stone statues, intricate and beautiful, that tells us about the elves' excellent craftsmanship. They're amongst large, ancient trees and plants. They're close to nature, giving it an almost otherworldly sense. Golden colours and yellow leaves give a sense of fall, sunset, time coming to an end. Stone architecture and surroundings give it a sense of age and timelessness. All of these things combined really sell us the idea that this is the home of the elves. It makes it feel safe. We know that our heroes aren't in any danger here. You can use the same techniques on your players. I'm not an expert on this stuff, so check out film analysis and breakdowns for more information and help on this, but it's a valuable tool to help improve your ability to set the scene. Observe and talk to your players. Get their feedback. After taking on board and investing in these other steps, this next one becomes the most important. Because ultimately, our players are the ones who can tell us if we're a good DM or not. Nobody else can decide that. No amount of Twitter followers, published adventures, Twitch subs, or celebrity endorsements make somebody a good dungeon master. The ones who decide that are the people who sit down and spend several hours playing with us. Our players are our critics, our advisors, our beta testers, and our supporters. They tell us if we're doing a good job, what we did that was fun, what wasn't, what they want us to do less of, and what they hope to see next time. Whenever you see or hear a D&D horror story about a bad GM, the problem is often that they don't listen to the players, they don't care about the players having fun, or they are just plain outright nasty. You're not a bad GM if you don't do silly voices, or your world lore isn't 300 pages long. You're a bad GM when you only care about yourself, ignoring the players' desires, their boundaries, and their fun. Now, I admit, some players are not the best for getting feedback from. You need to take their criticism critically. Let's say you ask your players about the session. Some folks give you great feedback. Oh, I really liked talking with the Magister and learning more about the Academy of Magic. That was fun. The combat with the Mechanical Owlbear was good, but I wish the environment we fought in was more interesting. I wanted my swashbuckler to do some really cool tricks when fighting. A++ feedback. This is really useful stuff to help you improve. Players saying, I think we should have leveled up. I wanted to get a cool magic item from this session. It's not fair. We didn't focus on my backstory this time. This sort of feedback can be useful. It could be an indicator that the players didn't feel rewarded enough, that their player isn't getting a fair chance to explore, explore the story they want to tell, or they may feel underpowered for the encounters you're using. But this sort of thing can also just be a toxic, selfish attitude. Perhaps, Master Wayne, this is a player that you don't fully understand. A couple of years ago, some friends and I were playing in a campaign in the Forgotten Realms. We were working for one of the Master Lords of Waterdeep who was looking for a magic stone. A few sessions in, this fella decides he doesn't care about the story or any of us. All he wants to do is level up and get magic items. Then one day, we find him alone in the woods killing animals. He was farming them for XP. Then why play a role-playing game? Well, because he wanted to win. Because he wanted to prove that his character was the strongest. Some players don't care about a story. Some players don't care about having fun with their friends. Some players just want to watch the world burn. You'll need to decide if the feedback you get from your players is in good faith, but it's so important to ask for it, and most importantly, to listen when they give it to you. Be invested in your own game. It may sound obvious, but your best sessions as a dungeon master will come when you are invested in the campaign. Sometimes, and I speak from experience here, being a DM or GM can feel like a chore. It sometimes feels like we are just facilitators of other people having fun, a parent trying to keep a bunch of unruly kids in line. We can feel pressured to run a session because otherwise it means no D&D or TTRPGs at all. 
Sometimes a campaign doesn't go the way we thought it would and it becomes less fun for us to run it. Or maybe you started running a pre-written adventure but find yourself frustrated with it or confused. There's not always an easy fix for these problems, but if you aren't invested in your own campaign, if you're bored or unhappy, you won't be able to succeed as a DM. If you feel bored or uninterested in your campaign, take a step back. Consider what you can do to change it. If you're running a pre-written adventure and you're bored, maybe start a new custom campaign of your own. If you're trying to run a homebrew campaign but it's getting confusing, try running a pre-written one to ease up on your workload. Maybe the story in your campaign isn't as fun for you or your players. Can you change something about it? Maybe the players are enjoying an aspect of the campaign you didn't expect. Can you embrace that and get on board with them? Remember, the players don't know what you have planned. It's okay to change things, shift the attention from the big villain you had in mind to something else. If the espionage political campaign you imagined isn't fun and everybody enjoys more of the combat and treasure hunting, shift the campaign to focus on that instead. Nothing is stopping you from revealing a mysterious uncharted island and having the players sent to explore it. You don't have to force yourself through a campaign you aren't enjoying. If your players are enjoying the game, but you aren't, talk to them about it. What is it about the campaign that they like? Can you focus more on that? Does their enthusiasm help give you a boost? Is there something they have done or in their backstory that is exciting to you? Something that sparks your creativity? Don't be afraid to change things. Trust me, it happens to all of us, and more often than players may realise. I've had it several times with my stream campaign Erois, but I've always found things to spice it up and get me excited again. Or the players have done that for me in many cases too. Like I said at the start, no quick fixes or magic methods that will make an improvement overnight, but these are seriously the best things you can do to improve as a dungeon master in general. There's more specific details of how to make combat encounters more exciting, how to create more interesting NPCs, but those kind of things, well, they need specific videos of their own. Thanks for watching this video. For more D&D stuff, check out some of my other videos, or if you're interested in live action role playing, one of my LARP videos perhaps as well, please do share the video with your friends on Reddit, Facebook, etc. And leave me a comment down below if this advice is helpful, or if you have your own tips to share as well. Till next time, take care and be kind.